What's going on, everybody? I'm Justin Voss. Uh, you can see the timer running. You probably read the title down below, so you already know what's coming. I have 10 fabrication tips in 10 minutes. Uh, if you're new to my channel, I hope you consider sticking around and subscribing. I don't want to waste too much time, so let's just get into it. Number one, find the center of a circle. I have this piece of aluminum here, and I'm gonna find the center of it. Obviously, this would work on anything round. To do so, you just need a square that is larger than the circle. Uh, you place the square down on the circle, and the most important part is to line up the point of the square at the edge of the circle. And where the outside crosses over the edge, you're just gonna make a mark. And then where those lines meet the edge, draw a line across the circle and do the same thing again somewhere else making sure the square is lined up with the edge make a mark and connect them just to show you this is actually the center i'm going to do it one more time There you go. And there's the center. Number two, using template paper to locate a hole. This next one has a ton of use cases. I'm just gonna show it in this example right here. Say you're wanting to put a door over this opening. Um, this is an existing piece and it already has these two holes. There's no way to get in behind here to mark this hole location. So a trick you can do is take a piece of tape and a piece of some kind of stiff paper and you want to make sure there's room for the door to fit in its place. And just kind of lay it on there. It doesn't have to be perfect. And tape it down. Now you want to make sure the tape is straight and stiff. That way you know when it lays back down, it's right where it was. Then just take a pick, a uh, Sharpie, anything you want to shade it in. I'm going to use a pick and actually poke the holes. And find the holes. So now I have the holes marked. Then take the piece, whatever you're trying to fit in there. This works really well for one hole. I'm just using this example with two holes at the same time. And you would place this exactly where you want it. You could probably measure. Just gonna kinda eyeball it right here in the center. And then lay the piece back on. And mark them. Drill those out and you'll have exact hole placement where you need them to be. Number three, use a pointed bolt to mark holes. This next one's along the same lines of marking holes. Um, say you do have another set of holes. Uh, I can get to this one, but I still can't get to this one. But these are actually tapped, and I want to bolt this to here. One thing you can do, and you could use the previous method on this too, but it kind of depends on how many holes you have to do and if they're tapped or not, is you just take a regular bolt and then actually cut the head off of it and grind it down to a point. You would wanna do this for however many set of holes you have that you want to mark. Once you have the bolts ready, you can run them down in each hole. Wanna be careful not to put them in too far so you can still get them out with your fingers. And then position whatever you want exactly where you want it. Like I said, you could probably measure this. And then just tap. and it'll punch exactly where you need to drill your holes. Number four, make your own center punch. All right, last one, marking holes related. This one's pretty simple and straightforward, but most bolts are made out of already hardened steel, so it just makes sense that if you need a quick center punch, you can just grind the end off of a bolt to a point and use it with a hammer as a quick DIY center punch. Number five, scrap metal compass. Now, earlier we found the center of a circle, but say you need to draw the circle in the first place. Well, if you know the circle's radius, you don't need like a fancy compass. You can just, this is just a piece of scrap metal. Uh, mark its radius in two locations. So say I want a 16 inch circle. I'm gonna make any point here, it doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna make another point eight inches away from that one. Also, not really important as long as the distance is correct. I'm gonna drill out these two points. I'm 
and you can find anything to hold this down with right where you want the center of the circle to be. Put a Sharpie in the other hole. And draw a perfect circle. Number six, using backing to fix a hole in sheet metal. Now this one has to do with tacking thin sheet metal. This is 24 gauge steel. This is very common in bodywork, like on race cars. Um, I'm gonna mount it in a vertical position. Obviously I could lay it flat and have a backer, but sometimes you don't have anything behind it. Like say you're tacking body panels on a truck. Everything can be going along fine and then bam, you blow a hole in it. The best thing to do is grab a piece of aluminum or copper and use it as a backer behind it to help you fill in that hole as opposed to just chasing the hole around which will probably happen if you don't put something behind it. The good thing about using aluminum or copper is you're not going to accidentally weld the sheet metal to the backing. Before I go any farther, I wanted to thank this video sponsor, which is Empire Abrasives. Empire Abrasives is where I get all of my grinding and conditioning discs from. Um, a common one I use is a three inch disc on this Rolock type Arbor that you can get from Empire Abrasives too. And then all these pads quickly attach just like that. They have these ceramic grinding discs, regular grinding discs, surface conditioning discs, cutoff wheels, these great flap wheels that I love to use hand pads they got everything there tons of stuff that I, I don't even use that might be better for your applications i'll leave a link to empire abrasives down below if you head over there you can see their entire catalog of everything they have to offer and if you use promo code voss at checkout you'll receive 10 percent off your first order so thanks again to empire abrasives for sponsoring this video number seven burning an inch now what i mean by burning an inch is just using the one inch mark as the end of your tape measure that eliminates this play that's on here and gives you a more precise measurement sometimes this could be wore out or just not accurate so if you're going to measure eight inches on this piece of tubing you would actually line up the one inch mark on the end and then mark it at nine you have to remember that you burned an inch or you will be messing up a lot of your measurements and have one inch smaller pieces this also works for a metric tape measure as well, obviously. Number eight, use a countersunk bolt to center a weld nut. Now on this one, hopefully you can see what I mean because I found the smallest example possible for this. But essentially, if you need to weld a nut over a already drilled hole, you know, to give it threads that you're gonna bolt something to, you can use a countersunk bolt that fits that nut and it will both hold the nut tight so you can weld it against whatever you're gonna weld it to and the countersunk part of the bolt will hold it dead center into the hole. That way you know when you take the bolt out, your threads are perfectly centered in the hole. Number nine, template paper patterns. Okay, this is a good tip if you need something to fit into an already existing area. The last thing you wanna do, say you're cutting out a piece of aluminum, is try and cut it oversized and then trim it and trim it and trim it to get it to fit into an exact area. All you need is any scrap to be as a backing to kind of fill in the general space. And then just little pieces of like construction paper that you cut, maybe you need a curve, you cut a little bit of a curve in it and you fit it to the areas and tape them in there and build your panel out that way. Then you can lay that template you just created onto your new piece, cut it out, and you'll have a perfectly sized piece of metal. Number 10, using a heat bar. This one can be important if you're welding anything thin where you don't want the heat to travel or warp the material, uh, especially like in something like thin stainless steel. You can use heat bars. These can be made out of anything, but pretty much just a couple heavy pieces of metal. These are aluminum in my case and you would just clamp these down as close as you can to where you're gonna actually weld, and it's gonna help absorb the heat from traveling out as well as keep the piece nice and flat. And that's it, 10 fabrication tips in 10 minutes. Thanks again to Empire Abrasives for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check them out by following the link down below. If you're new to my channel, I hope you consider sticking around and subscribing. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. That's all I have, so I'll see you next time. If you want to see more, YouTube's about to throw up what it thinks you might enjoy. Catch you later.